Man, I dropped my wrench. What in the world? Well, I just had some fine items here I thought I needed to bring over here. I got work to do, man. Well, you know. It's, you know. What, what it, what where do these come a, from? A vet. A vet? Yeah, I mean, I can't guarantee there's a vet out there right now that may have a small issue stopping later, but... What do you want for them? Well, you know, we'll do 10 bucks a piece. 10 bucks a piece? 10 bucks a piece. I was thinking 10 bucks for all of it. Well, okay. Uh, 11 bucks a piece. Oh, the price went up. Well, you know. I tell you what, I don't even want any of that stuff. I don't even think I can use it. I got 12 poor associates, and some of them don't even have gold chains. They only made it up to silver. Silver? Yeah. Well, it is the Christmas season. I guess I'll take them. I'll take I'll take them at eight bucks a piece. Okay, you twist my arm, but it'll work. You're a good man, wizard. You're a good man. Okay, well, I'll just set these over. I gotta keep working. You. I gotta get this exhaust manifold on. I gotta find my wrench. <laughs> Mr. Wizard. Oh, sorry about that. Oh man. This is getting old. Well, I, I do apologize, but I have this item here that um, I don't think any shop should be operating without. A timing light? Well, of course a timing light. This is a high quality piece of equipment. High quality? It looks like it's from the 80s. It's the 80s, man. We're like the DeLorean. These are good years. A DeLorean? Yeah. You, you ever driven a DeLorean? Can't say I have. Well, I know somebody who has one. Do you? Yeah. Hmm. Five bucks. And. I'm sure in all these tools, you don't have such a fine piece of whatever this is again. A timing light. Oh, yeah, timing light. Yeah, that's right. I'll take it for $250. 275 All right. Well, set it on my toolbox. You're the man. I got to get back to work, man. You need to quit doing that. Well, we obviously have a lot of... Porsches here in the shop today, lines and lines of them, and I can tell you what, that crazy D guy was really starting to piss me off. I couldn't even hardly get anything done, and he's over here trying to pawn a bunch of crap off on me. Speaking of annoying, this here is a 2000 Porsche Boxster S. It's in fairly good shape, and we're going to go over some of the common issues, things that you can expect, pretty much expect to repair if you buy one. And also, we're going to do a repair today. We're There's the... Uh, the trunk latch just broke on it. We're going to be showing you how to replace that today. So we'll start from with the first annoyance. Okay, so problem number one is, which is fairly common on these and also on the, the 911s, you're driving down the road and you come to a stop and it just makes this noise like an owl. Like, whoo! I don't know, Hoovy can do it really good. You'll have to get him to do it on camera sometime or something. I can't, I can't make the noise. But anyways, there's a valve that's inside on the filler neck and commonly that can be the problem I actually replaced the one on this one it didn't solve it but there's a trick that you can do to get rid of the hooting owl noise that's very annoying on these that it does there's a little vent hole right here and that's where air goes in it pulls air what I do is take like scrubby pad material it's real coarse blue material and push it into the hole just like so close the lid and it won't make the noise again I can promise you that what that does is alter the airflow that goes into there and now it's not pulling it strong it still allows the correct amount of airflow through everything works just fine but the, the, the noise is gone so that's wizard tip number one on on that specific problem Okay, so problem number two. It's a nice hot summer day. You're shopping, you open your rear trunk and you smell antifreeze. And it's usually soaked in the carpet. What it always is, is the reservoir. This, this seam that goes around, this one's already been replaced on this car, but there's a seam that goes around the whole bottle and the seam gives way and it starts leaking antifreeze. Let me see if I can get this out of the way and show it to you. There you go, there's the coolant reservoir. You're going to have to take loose this bolt and take a bunch of stuff loose here. 
and the res reservoir is not too hard. You have to unhook some of the hoses that are actually in the engine bay back there, but it's not too bad of a job. But if you got coolant all in here, you can go ahead and purchase one of these. That's going to be your fix. Okay, the next problem is is a very common problem. You're driving around, you got your engine up to operating temperature. You park the car, you get out, and it smells like an oil refinery is on fire. It smell, you smell burning oil. It's really strong. It, it can actually smoke can come out billowing out. And what it's going to be is these ignition coils have little oil seals, little O-rings, little plastic tubes that they slide into. The tube, the O-rings go bad, and then it just starts dripping oil, and it gets all over the catalytic converter, and you smell oil. Okay, and the last problem that's fairly common on these is you go to start it, it's been sitting all night, you start the engine, and you get a cloud of white smoke, like a mosquito fog, behind your car. Then it clears up and you're good to go and it doesn't do it the rest of the day. What you can look at replacing on that is your crankcase vent valve. It sits on the rear right of the engine and it, it separates oil out of the oil vapors in the crankcase and it goes bad. And then the first, your first start in the morning, it just sucks up straight oil and there's your smoke. So there's your there's your fix for that. So obviously on, on these car or any cars, there can be many, many other common problems. I could probably make a two hour video out of common problems on any car. But I just went over some of the ones that I've repaired a lot on these cars. And the last one I'm gonna show you, or we're actually gonna fix it, is either one or both of these, the trunk, the front boot or the rear trunk cable breaks. And just like Crazy D was an annoyance today, this can be quite an annoyance. So we're going to be taking this sill plate out and we're going to be pulling the old cable out and replacing it. I have a brand new one here in the bag. We're going to be installing that today. So this is the door seal. This is where the latches are located. We're going to be taking this sill out. The first step is there's three black little plastic plugs that are access holes for the, the bolts that hold this in. And as you can see, I've already got one out. It's just a little black plastic plug. There's one, two, and three of those in here. The next step is a five millimeter Allen. There's, it'll be, need to be kind of about that long. And I like to use this little, something that you might have, an, an Allen wrench or a ratchet or whatever, because your seat's gonna be in the way. It's kind of hard to, to get a full blown ratchet in here. But this is something that I use. It's just a little bit. It takes quarter inch drive little bits. It's a Matco tool. We're going to go ahead and take these loose now. Just pull up and there's our, uh, there's little brass or CAD plated little Allen bolts. Just like so. You want to make sure you don't lose them down in there. Here we have the mechanism for the hood, the front boot. And here's the trunk. It's got a broken cable. We're going to disconnect the cable. It runs up through the body and to the back. We're going to go ahead and fish that out now. You have to pry this little cable out of there as you... There's a little groove that it fits into right there. Three millimeter Allen. We're going to take loose this little black Allen. That holds the eye, the actual eye of this, this side of the cable. And there's a little Allen bolt that holds the eye in. There's our broken eye. The cable broke right there. So I've got this back carpet pulled away, got the weather stripping pulled away, and I partially pulled through the cable out of this channel up to this point. And we're going to tape these to the new one to the old one, and we're going to pull it through. I'm putting a little grease all over this so it sl should slide right through. Okay, I'm going to have you start pulling, and I'm going to guide it. It'll be a little bit tight right there, but keep pulling. And there we go, we pulled it through. You need to, you want to make sure you wrap the tape several, several times to make it strong enough, because you have to pull pretty hard. 
And if it wasn't for the grease that's on here, we would have got caught and would have ripped the tape. But because the grease was on there, it was able to slide right past. So I saved a lot of panels and pulling stuff apart. I used the old cable to pull through the new cable. Okay, I got my handy dandy Milwaukee light set up in here so I can see. We're going to take this cover off of the uh, latch here. Okay, we got the cover off. Now we're going to pull back the carpet. And here's the other, other end of our cable. This doesn't have an Allen bolt, it has a little bitty clip. Just lift up on the edge. And there's the little clip. Take the broken... There's the broken piece. There's another little eye down here. This is the power latch. You don't want to discard that or leave that unhooked. That's for the electric motor to, to pop your, your trunk loose. So we'll leave that on there. There we go. There's the old broken cable. Now we're going to cut this tape loose. Get the tape off of this one. The next step we're going to do is uh, run the cable through the carpet like the old one was. We're going to go ahead and put it on our the little shaft there and put our clip back on. Now we're going to push this onto the groove. Okay, now we'll reassemble everything back here. And now we're going to route this cable and pull the carpet up a little bit here. Now we're going to fish a piece of uh, wire through. This is just mechanics wire. So I've fed it through like a floss. You can floss with it. Hook it around our cable. Yeah. We got it fished through. We're going to hook our eye back onto the lever and put it back into the groove. When you run this new cable through the gold, that's kind of funny, golden eye, but the golden eye goes to this latch. The silver one goes to the the trunk back there. Sometimes you have to kind of tap it in, it's kind of tough. So we got that portion hooked in. The next thing you want to do is take your three gold colored bolts and put them into place. These grooves here are going to slide over them. And then there's a little white colored plastic eye down here. This is your power, kind of a security lock deal. This little linkage will slide into that hole. If you don't get those lined up, you'll have to take it back apart until you get it right. So Line up these three grooves onto your gold colored bolts. There's two little legs that need to go underneath the carpet. That's kind of a tough one. It wants to fight you. Now we got everything in place. We're going to tighten it up. Put your three little plastic caps back on. Reassemble this carpet piece that we moved out of the way.
put the weather stripping back on. Now comes the moment of truth. We're going to pull this up and see if it opens the trunk. And voila, there you go. So that concludes some of the annoyances that are common with these and we actually did a repair on this one. Some of you have got a broken latch. It'd be a similar procedure for up front or in the back. I would say on our scale of difficulty, it's probably a three or four. It's not hard, but it can be very aggravating if you get that through and the tape was to break or if you didn't have it all set up right. Um, I could probably have this done in 30 minutes. It's not that huge of a job, but it sure saves a huge annoyance. So uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell. I have a lot of tools listed on the Amazon affiliate page. You can purchase them, it'll help me out. And again, thanks for watching.